Is that Quentin Sands I just saw leaving? Mm-hmm. You know him? I know of him. Why was he holding your hands? Kissing them? What are you implying, Harvey? I don't know. Maybe you two are going steady. I was implying that it looked like he was grateful to you for taking his case. Good, because that's exactly what it was. That's a bad move. We may make money billing out on their defense, but when we lose, which we will, it's going to hurt us in the long run. How do you know we'll lose? Because it's my job to know, and his company's ALS wonder drug is killing people. ALS is incurable. And everyone who is taking that drug is going to die anyway. Hmm. That's your defense. If he kills them a little faster, it's a public service? Our defense is those allegations are untrue. He has taken this story all over town, and not a single firm thinks he has a case. Which is why he came to me. Because he wants someone who believes in him. And what is it exactly that makes you believe in him? Well, I got to know his character pretty well during the time that we were married. Quentin is expecting you tomorrow. You forgot this last night. I didn't forget that. I have no intention of taking this case. Oh, I did get you this. What is it? Wedding gift. I'm sorry it's so late, but it's hard to be on time when I never knew you were married. Are you seeing anyone, Harvey? Hmm? You don't want to tell me, and I don't really care, because you and I share the same trait of keeping our personal lives personal. You were married. It happened when you were at Harvard. It didn't work out. We were too dedicated to our careers, and that's all I'm going to say about it. OK. You're right. It's none of my business. I'm still not taking this case. Why is that? Because sometimes I do things that my clients don't like. And if their ex-wives are looking over my shoulders, that's not really a problem. But when their ex-wives are also my managing partner, that hamstrings me. And if I'm going to turn this loser into a winner, I can't be hamstrung. I can't have that. Do what you got to do. You won't interfere? What did I just say? Do you have any idea how hard it is to develop a new drug if you're not Pfizer or Amgen or Merck? This is important, Harvey. If Quentin came to you looking for someone to trust him, why aren't you handling this case yourself? That's none of your concern. Well, I'm not asking you as your colleague. I'm asking you as Quentin's attorney. After Quentin and I separated, he started seeing one of his research consultants, Lisa. They're still together, but he never married her. She doesn't want me on the case. Oh, terrific. You're sticking me with a losing case and a girlfriend who isn't going to like me any more than she likes you. Well, I'm sure it's not the first time someone hasn't liked you, Harvey. Who doesn't like me? Picture the devil. Ah, the house that Emmelink built. Nice, very nice. Colin Church, Mr. Sands, and Mr. Spector lately arrived to our little legal dispute. You say legal dispute, I say shakedown. Always a fine line between the two, n'est-ce pas? Look, we could sit here and posture about the strengths and weaknesses of our cases, but frankly, that's going to bore the hell out of me. Seriously? It could be much lower. It could be much higher. Let's pretend it's just right. My clients' lives are being cut short. And according to accepted calculations, the current value of a life is $7.9 million. You're not even offering pennies on that. Those happen to be EPA calculations based on a full life expectancy. Adjusted for plaintiffs whose expectancy is just a fragment of this yields a value of $143,000. $427, approximately. What your child fails to understand is that for someone with only three to five years to live, each day is worth infinitely more. But the real crux is the punitive damages. Because if your client wants to sell me the idea that he didn't know about these side effects years ago, I'm not buying it. Which is why we want $250 million. What? Quentin. No, this is outrageous. Do you know what you're doing? You're bankrupting this company and taking away years of life from real people who are walking, talking, and breathing easier because of the drug we make. I don't represent those people. My clients... They're tenuous claims at best. And unless one of your six is Rupert Murdoch, you're out of your mind. <sighs> OK. You 
printed that? Well, not yet, but I will. You realize that's libelous? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But after it runs, you and I both know it won't much matter. We're done here. I don't take to extortion. I'm not gonna be bullied by an ambulance chaser no matter how nice the suit. It is nice, isn't it? Italian, and it fits. $250 million, Mr. Sands. I'll give you four days. Church wants to play, we play. I have housing court in the morning. It's housing court. Your grandmother could win. Let's see just how real his client's liver problems are. And if they are real, we suggest they're from the disease itself, or they took the wrong dose, or they took a cocktail of combined drugs. Also, I want to see Quentin's company financials. I already asked for them once. I want you to call them and follow up. I want to know everything Church could go after. So we've gone from settlement to scorched earth. I didn't feel like writing a quarter billion dollar check. It's a negotiation. Exactly, that's why I'm arming myself for the next round. By digging into Quentin. I'm a boy scout. I like to be prepared. So you think you'll look like a boy scout by putting dying people on the stand and tearing them apart? You're gonna look like an asshole. For every one they claim has a side effect, we have 600 who don't. And if I need to look like an asshole to convince the jury that hundreds are more important than the one, I'm not gonna lose a minute's sleep over it. Well, I have court in the morning. Oh, I'm, I'm not clear. Was this a conversation with my managing partner or my client's ex-wife? You need to settle this case, Harvey. Which I will do if you stay out of it, as you promised. Make it go away. <laughs>